as far as tools, one of my favorite tools to use is a paint pen. But listen, people, never ride stock, right? They show up like this. For example, this is, for, this is a pen from Molotov. They show up like this. Who works with a rectangle? So what I do is whenever I get a new pen, before I get the, 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 the paint flowing through it, I alter the tip because I don't want to work with this square, chunky thing. I don't want to work with a rectangle. I'm not quite sure what I want to do, but what I'll do is I'll start chipping away and then slice it, slice it, slice it, so I get much more of a, uh, an uncontrolled mark, a mark that I don't know what is exactly what's going to happen. So I will turn that pen into this kind of, much more of a, of a, of a, of a brush, and I get much more of a, uh, uh, an, an interesting kind of hairy, line than I would out of, out, of, out of that thing. So don't ever ride stock, right? Alter everything, we customize everything. Um, and I have a whole shoe box full of all different kinds of, uh, all different kinds of pens um, that, we've, that I've altered. And every time I start a job, I kind of will go through each pen looking f to find the one that makes uh, a line that like uh, speaks to me for that job. Uh, there are a couple pieces here I want to show you, a couple jobs I can take you through. This is the cover uh, from uh, a couple months ago of Smithsonian Magazine. This was done with the paint pen. And the way I did it actually was I didn't draw the letters, I just had like a loose sketch and I drew around them. And again, the pen, is filling in areas that I'm not quite kind of in control of. So the sketch, I mean, excuse me, the, uh, the drawing for the typography looks like this. Again, there are choices here in the lettering that the bulkiness of the pen made, I didn't make. And, I, I, and I'm comfortable with that. There's a Time Magazine cover from a couple of years ago, all, all done with uh, paint pen. Probably two different styles. The arrows were drawn with a heavier pen and the typography was just drawn um, um, with a lighter pen. And this is a recent cover for Wired Magazine. This is Love Music again. Um, and this was, again, I could have used a, a brush, a sumi brush, but I used uh, a paint pen. And you can see the difference in the widths of the line, and that's because of the way that I've cut the brush. Different pieces land on it, depending on the pressure that I put on the brush. Um, I can show you the, uh, um, and one, another interesting note here, when I show you the, 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 the sketches, is the size of the sketches. They're small. Probably more than my computer, I use my copier. I use a Xerox machine to blow things up. Or I'll draw something that looks fairly interesting, large, and then I'll shrink it down and then redraw it small, just to see what happens when you blow it up. You know, it blows up all these little hairs and all these little crazy bits. Um, and you can see this is the amount this is, the, this is the number of times that I drew the typography. Not a lot. And I, didn't re and I didn't go back to fix any of the letters. You know, we didn't say, oh, that's a nice L and that's a nice O. Um, I'm not interested in that. Again, those are random decisions. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for something authentic and something, something, something um, fast and something that feels fast. Some more typography made with these big clunky paint pens. Again, no cleaning up, not concerned about beauty or ugly, right? Um, the pens, the, uh, the line they make on their own, if you can stand the smell, um, they make a beautiful line. And it depends, again, it depends on what you call it to do and how, you, how hard you push on it. Um, this one has got a lot of little hairs in it. Um, 
and it can be as structured as you want, or you can let it uh, let it roam. And the faster the faster you do it, if you can figure out how to maintain that painterly quality that's in the line, adds another le level of flavor to it. It's funny because when I work with these pens, or I want to work with Sumi, Sumi brushes, when I send the work out, you know, we don't clean up any of the any of the hairs or even any of the little spits that come from this thing and usually when we get a comment from the client that they like something they usually are responding to those tiny little hairs and those tiny little details in it it's kind of interesting it's almost uh, it's almost a, the opposite of what you would expect that's a nice page so again for the same tool in two extremely different lines so this is a, a sumi brush, a ja traditional Japanese calligraphy brush. I have I have a, a number of them I use. Um, this one that I used to stir paint with at one point um, is my favorite. Um, and I'm well, again one of the reasons why I like working with this type of tool is because I can't technically control it. I'm not interested in that. I'm much more interested in this, in in what the brush will do for me and what the surprises will come. So what you can do with this brush, because it comes to such a fine point, is you can draw extremely fine. And although when they, when you put the pressure on it, it'll make it'll it'll bulge out to a much wider line. And if you twist it and turn it, and I never learned how to properly use it, and I try to use that as a benefit. Pretty good. <laughs> so that would be the Sumi brush, and it holds a ton of ink. So before you wash it, you got to get all this stuff out, and you have to wash it and take care of it. Because if you like these tools, take care of them. And I've always just chosen to use um, this brand of ink. I don't even know what it is. It's a Japanese ink, um, and I can't even read the can't even read the label. 